Welcome to Tech Photo Blog. This is episode number 35. This week I'm going to be discussing flash lag or the time between when you trigger a flash and when the flash is actually emitting light. Now in the past I've done some episodes about shutter lag and you know that tends to be in the 50 to 100 millisecond time frame. During those episodes I always said that flash lag is basically zero or instantaneous and obviously that's not right. In the physical world nothing ever happens instantaneously so what we're going to do is actually measure flash lag during this episode and then sort of quantify it to how, see how it actually compares to uh, shutter lag. I actually expect flash lag to be you know maybe a thousand times faster or more than uh, what we saw with shutter lag, but let's measure it and find out. So here's the basic setup I'm using to measure the flash lag. Uh, channel one of the oscilloscope is hooked up to the input of the flash right here on this breadboard, and that's going to stay at a high voltage until I push this button, which will short the two pins of the flash together, dropping the voltage down to zero, and that on the graph will indicate that it is now, we're, we're triggering the flash. And then on channel two, I've got the uh, light sensor here connected and it's being powered by this power supply here. So what we'll see then on channel two of the oscilloscope graph is we'll see the voltage drop down negative. And when that happens, that indicates that this sensor is detecting light. So that will be our indication that we're emitting light. And the distance between where the channel one drops and where channel two also drops down into the negative range, uh, that distance there is going to be the time uh, that it took to emit light from the flash or the flash lag. Okay, so now we're ready to take a measurement. All we have to do is point the light sensor at the flash, hit this button, the flash is triggered, and we get this graph. So here's a close-up of the scope and the yellow line is the input voltage to the flash so this indicates that the trigger happened here where voltage went from high to low at this point. There's also some noise on the trigger voltage but just ignore that that's part of how the flash is designed so it's pretty irrelevant here. Uh, the blue line is the light being emitted and what we can see is that it, start, it, it gets emitted at this point. This peak here is where light is being emitted. So we know that this event happens at zero time on the oscilloscope. So if we just move the time over here, we can see that, you know, at that point there's, you know, a decent amount of light being emitted. The, the farther down the, the blue line goes, the more light is being emitted. Uh, so what we can see is that uh, around 55 microseconds is where I would say the flash is actually emitting light. Uh, you can also measure the flash duration here, but I have previous blogs where I've done that, so I'll put some links to those in the show notes. But for this episode, 55 microseconds is the amount of flash lag we're measuring. So I did a bunch of testing with three different flashes, and all three of the flashes had very consistent flash lags. The Yongnu 460 was 55 microseconds, the Canon 580EX was 60 microseconds, and the Canon 580EX2 was 60 microseconds. And actually these two graphs on the uh, uh, scope looked very similar. I, I couldn't actually tell any differences. I kind of think that they didn't change the trigger circuitry or the, the flash tube, you know, significantly between these two uh, versions. Whereas the Yongnu was, you know, significantly different. And this actually points out that if you're doing high-speed photography and you really want all of your flashes triggering at the exact same time, uh, it's probably best to go with uh, a bunch of flashes of the same type if you're using multiple flashes. Otherwise, you're going to have slightly different uh, triggering times for each. And I wanted to compare these flash lags to shutter lag. Uh, shutter lags are typically 50 to 100 milliseconds. So that's a millisecond versus a microsecond, meaning that we're talking about a thousand times slower for your typical shutter lag. Thanks for watching.